Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain six bullets. This movie tells the story of a former Special Forces officer who is asked to save a child from human trafficking. However, he was traumatized to accept the mission because he had failed to save the hostages in the previous mission. Will he be able to save the child from human trafficking? Let's find out in six bullets. Does God really forgive? Six Bullets tells a story of a man named Samson entering a nightclub that is a center for child trafficking. That night Samson is negotiating a transaction for the trafficking of a boy named Victor with a human trafficking syndicate. Samson offered a price high enough that the head of the human trafficking cartel seemed pleased to welcome him. When Samson put out some money on the table, he suddenly attacked all members of the trafficking syndicate with a knife. A fierce fight between Samson and the rest of the criminal syndicate finally broke out. Even though Samson is alone, he can easily defeat each member of the criminal syndicate one by one. Samson is a former Special Forces member and the best member of the police force, so his fighting skills are very superior. After successfully defeating all members of the criminal syndicate, Samson goes to a room to find Victor and save him from that place. Samson explains to Victor that he is an errand boy from his mother assigned to bring him back. Soon after, Samson and Victor went to the basement and drove out of the club on a motorbike. Before Samson left, he first turned on the remote timer to set off the bombs installed in all the cars and corners of the room. Finally, a few seconds after Samson and Victor got out of the place, a huge explosion started happening in every car and corner of the building. All members of the human trafficking syndicate were killed by the explosion. Without Samson knowing, he had forgotten something very important. All the child prisoners in the building will be killed by the bomb explosion and the fire. The next morning, Samson was awakened by the sound of a phone call from the police. Samson was asked to come to the building of the human trafficking syndicate, which was now charred by the flames and bomb explosions. When Samson arrived at the scene, a male inspector of investigation named Steve felt very angry and disappointed with him because of his reckless actions last night. Samson accidentally killed several children held captive by human trafficking victims in the building. Most children died from carbon dioxide poisoning caused by the fire last night. From the words of Inspector Steve, it is known that Samson, who was previously a former special police force, is currently still employed individually by certain parties. Although Samson's intention to save Victor was good, his rash actions have caused other people to lose their lives, and the police have suffered heavy losses. Inspector Steve asked Samson to quit his individual job and stop intervening in the police business. The scene changes to the next six months. Samson has now switched professions to become a beef seller and lives a normal life like other people. However, Samson is still traumatized by the mistakes he made six months ago. Samson often saw reflections of children who died from the fires caused by him. Elsewhere, there was an American family who came to the country of Moldova. The father is named Faden, the mother is named Monica, and the teenage daughter, Becky. That morning they arrived at the international airport of Moldova and intended to go to a hotel. They seemed to be enjoying their arrival in Moldova and Becky seemed excited to start this family vacation. Faden is an MMA fighter who will fight in one of the Moldovan cities. When Faden was taking pictures of his beloved daughter, he did not realize that there was a woman named Amelia who was secretly taking pictures of his daughter from behind. When they arrived at the hotel, Becky asked her father's permission to go to the balcony to find a more stable cell phone network. Meanwhile, Faden was busy watching MMA matches on television. When Becky was on the hotel balcony, she accidentally met Amelia, standing on the balcony of the next room. Amelia said that the signal on the lobby floor was more stable than the signal on their floor. Shortly after, Faden looked for Becky while calling out her name. But when Faden came to check the balcony, he did not find his daughter and only saw the laptop left on the table. After that, Faden tried to call Becky's cell phone but didn't get any answer. Meanwhile, Monica doesn't know where Becky is either because she's been in the bathroom since they arrived. Faden, who couldn't find Becky anywhere, started to panic and immediately reported this to the hotel manager. After the hotel checked its CCTV, they still didn't get any clues. Faden then contacted the media, and news of Becky's disappearance began to spread. Due to Faden's reputation as a former champion MMA fighter who is quite popular and respected, the Moldovan police immediately mobilized all their members to look for Becky's whereabouts. At the same time, Samson, who was taking a break and during his busy work at the butcher shop, saw the news of Becky's disappearance on television. Shortly after, Faden and Monica as Becky's parents came to see Samson ask for his help finding their daughter. Faden said that someone from the American embassy told him to come to see Samson and ask him for help. Samson said he couldn't help them because he was just an ordinary person. However, Monica, who had worked in the police, immediately recognized the tattoo on Samson's neck and knew that he had worked in a special police division. 
Faden and Monica kept begging Samson to help them find their daughter and even paid a hefty fee. But Samson still refused the request because he was still traumatized by his mistakes earlier. That evening, just as Samson was closing shop and about to go home, his son, Selwyn, came to see him. It turned out that the person from the American embassy who recommended Samson to Becky's parents was Selwyn. Selwyn tries to persuade his father to help Becky's parents find their 14-year-old daughter. Selwyn said that the police were now unable to do many things because the actual criminal syndicate was still protected by certain authorities. But again, Samson refused the request even though his own son requested it. Faden still hasn't given up and keeps trying to find his daughter by asking people on the roadside near the nightclub. When Faden enters a bar to ask about his daughter while showing a photo of Becky, some men even mock Faden by saying that Faden is not good at taking care of his daughter. This immediately provoked Faden's emotions, and a fight broke out in that place. Faden alone couldn't beat them because there were too many of them. Faden was beaten badly by a group of men in that place. Fortunately, a man in a black mask suddenly appears to save Faden and defeats all the men in the bar. It turned out that the man in the black mask was Samson, who had been following Faden for a long time. Samson then took Faden to his butcher shop to treat Faden's injuries. Upon arriving at Samson's butcher shop, Samson told Faden that he was willing to help him find his daughter with the condition that Samson would work alone and not be interfered with by anyone. The next night, Samson came to the place of a businessman named Lucas. At first, Samson disguised himself as a courier to get into the gate guard post and kill the guard. After that, Samson outwits all the guards around the building with an empty car that runs automatically. In a short time, Samson had managed to get into the security control room to enter Luca's room without the other guards noticing. After Samson entered Luca's room, he immediately caught Lucas and interrogated him about Becky's whereabouts. Lucas said he didn't know anything about Becky's disappearance. Hearing this, Samson threatens Lucas to find information about Becky and hand over the findings. And if Lucas is proven to be the mastermind behind all these cases, then Samson will come back to kill him. And it turns out that Samson's prediction was right. Lucas is the mastermind behind Becky's kidnapping case. After Samson leaves, Lucas contacts his henchman named Flat to kill Becky. Hearing Lucas' orders, Flat shot Amelia and her partner to clear the trail before threatening Becky with gasoline. The next day, the police found a burnt body suspected to be Becky's. This is evidenced by the presence of Becky's bracelet on the corpse's left arm. Samson, who was still in doubt after seeing the body's condition, asked the police to do a DNA test to determine who the body was. Soon after, Faden, Monica, and Samson went to the hospital to await the DNA test results of the bodies found earlier. After receiving information from the forensic doctor that the corpse was Becky's, Monica immediately started crying hysterically. Monica angrily slapped Samson because she thought all this was caused by his rash actions. The next morning, Faden and Monica prepare to return to America, while Samson vents his grief by drinking alcohol until he is very drunk. Shortly after, Lucas and his henchmen came to Samson's butcher shop to take revenge for Samson's actions the other day. Samson, who was still a little drunk, couldn't put up a fight when Lucas' henchmen whipped Samson's back with iron chains. Luckily, Samson could get back up and fight back against all of Lucas' henchmen. The shootout between Samson and Lucas and all his henchmen was fierce, but Samson managed to survive. Strangely, Samson again remembered the bracelet on Becky's left hand. Samson still remembers that Becky always wears her bracelet on her right hand, so Samson feels sure that the body found by the police the other day is most likely not Becky's. Then Samson immediately went to the international airport to meet Faden and Monica. When Samson arrived at the airport, he immediately approached Faden and Monica. Samson then said that Becky was still not dead while explaining the different positions of the bracelets on Becky's hands. Samson claims that the forensic doctor who examined the body that police found earlier may have been bribed by the suspect of Becky's kidnapping. Faden, Monica, and Samson went straight to the previous hospital to arrest the forensic doctor. After the doctor was arrested, Monica and Faden forced the doctor to tell who had paid for him. The doctor said that the person who paid him to fake the DNA test results were Stelu. Stelu is Moldova's deputy defense minister who owns a human trafficking business. Stelu did kidnap American girls from time to time because he liked to have American girls serve him. That day Stelu had known that the forensic doctor had revealed his secret to Faden, Monica, and Samson. After hearing the doctor's call, Stelu ordered Flat to take care of Becky's parents' problems. On the other hand, Samson takes Faden and Monica to a safe house to protect them from Stelu. Samson prepared the weapons that had been previously stored. Meanwhile, Becky is seen being held captive in a location far from urban areas. When the guards around Becky became careless,